What's up, everybody, and welcome to yet another edition of the Stand Up Guys podcast. This would be episode number three. Once again, I am your host, the incomparable one, Zach Jones, alongside my sibling from the same ding ding, Lester Jones. Man, I'm sad. I know you sat around thinking of that for a long time. <laughs> You're like, I'm finally ready for episode three. <laughs> but yeah, I'm Lester Jones, just ready to go. And rounding out the panel, he'll eat that ass, AJ Singh. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> this is AJ, good to be here, and uh, apparently I'll eat that ass. I mean, look, hosting isn't easy. You gotta, yeah. you, you gotta come up with some way of introducing people and uh, you know, I just thought you look like a guy that would eat that ass so everyone needs a motto <laughs> <laughs> Cle cleaning up that beard might be an issue <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna grow this sucker out let's see what happens <laughs> be dreadlocks <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you think women would appreciate the, <laughs> the beard in that scenario, or or no? Not no. afterwards. <laughs> you not for the kiss. Yeah, afterwards. you you won't be getting a good night kiss. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they might they might enjoy it. It might uh, you know tickle, <laughs> tickle butt. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, uh, so after last week's uh, depression fest, for any that listened, trying to uh, make funny of uh, 2020, uh, that didn't go as well as we'd like to. So we thought for this week, we'd travel back to a better time, um, The well, maybe, which is uh, the, the last decade, the, the tens, I guess is what they would call it. It sounds weird. You know, the 20s, 30s sounds fine, but calling a decade the 10s to me sounds weird. I don't know why. But anyway, uh, we decided to do our first list episode, counting down our top 10 movies of the past decade. Now, most people, uh, you know, probably did this um, at the end of last year, but uh, you know what? We didn't have a show then, so so fuck you. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, uh, let's be honest, there's not a lot of lot not a lot of new movies coming out now, so so why not count these? down um all right so you guys um first of all before we get going uh, any good stories from the week anything you guys want to share before we get going on this i got nothing i've just been working <laughs> all right Let's usually get some stories but nothing serious so i figure what we'll do is oh, we'll i do have a story oh Sorry. all right go ahead. Go ahead. i was at chipotle last night <laughs> and uh <laughs> this is how all good stories start yeah no, the guy <laughs> behind me in line he was some sort of psychopath like he called them in, they were a little slow you know it took a little while to get the food but he called the manager over and he was like you need to get in line and help these people and the manager was like yeah sure okay i'll help and uh you know that was fine and all but the guy just kept cussing at the manager the whole time he was making the food he was like mf this mf that i'm gonna make sure you do i was like god this guy is out of control at this point he needed to be kicked out of the restaurant but the manager was like okay and he just made the food and the whole time the guy was just on a power trip I, it just made everything so awkward for me. <laughs> yeah, you're right in the middle of it. <laughs> you, they should kick people out and it'd be like, he'd be begging to get back in. It's like, I, no, no, I'm sorry. I know that that customer is always right. Bullshit, like, is awful sometimes. Where, like, why do people put up with, like, so much stuff? No, you're definitely better off without some customers. Yes, definitely. The other customers don't want them around. You don't want them around. Yeah. Yeah, just cut them loose. All right. Um, so, yeah, let's I, I figure what we'll do is we'll kind of, you know, go around the, the room starting at number 10. And, uh, you know, if somebody mentions uh, maybe a movie that you have further up on your list, you can either, you know, chime in uh, then or or save it for when they when it comes up on your list, whatever you prefer. And then at the end, we'll probably also kind of throw in some of our honorable mentions that didn't quite make our list. Um, all right. So let's start out. Uh, AJ, you want to go first with your number 10 pick? Yes. All right. At number 10, I have Snowpiercer. Oh, okay. A movie that I feel like captures what society is like at, you know, at a lot of the time. So, I mean, uh, there's people in the back who are the grunts. They're living a very uh, mediocre life. I mean, worse than mediocre in this movie. Eating, what are cockroach bars or something for food and uh, fighting to survive. So, 
you know, working their way forward. So the, the, if you've seen the movie, spoiler alert uh, for people who haven't, the movie is about uh, the people in the back of the train in an in a ice age, basically. And this, this train is their only means of survival. And they're in the back of the train. They're fighting to move to the front of the train to get to the very front where the engine is. And they're trying to uh, basically change their world. They're trying to uh, establish themselves as a higher class citizens, you know, be able to eat and live better lives. And uh, it just shows you how these different classes live throughout the train. And it, it, it's an allegory for how society is, like from the bottom to the top. And I just like that movie a lot. And I like Chris Evans a lot. He's a good actor. So, yeah, number 10, Snowpiercer. Yeah, I actually, I did see that movie. Have you seen it? Yeah, I saw it. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, uh, I, I liked it okay. Um, I don't, I... I remember thinking, like, like <laughs> the train at some point. I'm like, how long is this train? And <laughs> does this make sense? But <laughs> it's a long road to the top. <laughs> it is a two hour long train. <laughs> I saw another movie on Netflix. I, I want to say it was called The Hole, but it was basically, yeah, a hole with all these levels. And it's kind of similar. It's like, you know, there's people on the bottom and the top and, and kind of all this layer. And that, that was pretty good, too. But. But yeah, I thought that one was pretty good. Snowpiercer, by the way, based on a comic, um, couple couple graphic novels. I've read them. I don't think they're that good. <laughs> but just throwing that throwing that out there, nerd. <laughs> somebody reads. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> as long as there's a lot of pictures, somebody will read. All right. So Snowpiercer. What about your number ten? So my number ten. I'm going with The Shape of Water and. I'm not sure it was maybe the best movie, but I really like uh, Guillermo. Yeah. He does some great stuff. I love kind of the fairy tale stories, and I, I just thought it had a lot of good visuals and just it, it was still a lot of fun. Yeah, I remember being very excited to see Shape of Water because it's definitely a movie that's up my alley. I got to say, overall, I, I just like the movie. I don't love it. And I think the thing that disappoints me, I, I think there's a couple changes um, that could have been made that that would have made me love it. I, I mean, I think the first problem is, you know, it's essentially a love story. This woman, um, you know, falls in love with this monster. But I don't think they gave them enough time together to the point where when, when in spoilers alert, she finally is breaking him out of the facility. I'm like, I, I don't necessarily buy that she's in love with him enough to do this. So I, I kind of wish they would have gave that um, more time to develop. And then also, the, the other thing I don't necessarily like, and this is going to make me sound um, prudish, but... I think about 99% of nudity and sex in movies is gratuitous, meaning that it's not really there to further the plot. It's just there to kind of titillate the audience. And like, like when you're a teenager, like movies like that are great. It's still great. <laughs> well, th my thing is, as an adult, <laughs> I've been told that there's an area of the internet that kind of has that covered <laughs> yeah. yeah i watch movies strictly with sex scenes. <laughs> and and so my thought like like the basically the for example the movie starts off with the um the main actress and she's really good i don't remember i'm, I'm blanking on her name um but she's basically like you know like jilling off in a, in a bathtub and it's basically just to show that she's lonely. And I'm like, yeah, you could do it that way, but you could just as much like have her look longingly at this couple that's in love or something, something that doesn't make the actress do something that uncomfortable. It's, you know, my thought. I mean, if, if I was a director, I'd do it just because like, I know somewhere out there, there'd be like parents and the kids sitting together and then it'd just be really uncomfortable. <laughs> and I think that's pretty funny. <laughs> You think a lot of people brought their kids to that movie? Well, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's super far out there. Like, I, I probably wouldn't have been, like, right off the bat, this isn't a kid's movie. But if it's rated R, you know, that's different. But. And and the the other thing is, um, you know, the the bad guy in the movie. And, uh, God, why am I blanking on everyone's name? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but he um, – and he's actually going to be in one of my movies, too. But, um, you know – they have him kind of do have him have like this also gratuitous sex scene with his wife, but basically the whole point of it 
is to make him uh, like really hammer home that he's a scumbag. But we already knew it before <laughs> that scene. And so I'm like, again, it's just, it doesn't seem like it was a necessary scene, but you know, whatever. I think one of my favorite parts is when he breaks his fingers off because they're rotten. And like, I've been waiting for him to do it for so long. And you know, it was so much like just um, build up. Like, I was like, oh, just rip the damn things off, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i need to watch that movie again um i'd watch that again yeah yeah um all right anything else to note on that one no, that's good all right so my number 10 and this this was a movie i was actually surprised that i liked it as much as i did simply because it's it's kind of a combination of two genres of movies that i don't really like on their own which is number one uh war movies which I don't really care for. And number two, uh, the horror genre, which uh, for the most part, I'm not a big fan of. Uh, but Overlord um, released, uh, it says here, November 9th, 2018. Uh, so uh, basically this movie, what it's about is it's kind of this alternative history of World War II where this, uh, this group of army men are dropped into uh, Nazi-occupied France. And like their whole goal is there's this um, radio tower it's basically um, blocking um, uh, the Allied forces' uh, radio signals, and so they got to take down this thing so that um, basically so they can call in air support for D-Day, which is like the next morning. Um, um, but um, as they make their way into this um, uh, radio tower, which is also like a, I think like a church, um, they find out that there's some some supernatural elements going on um, because uh, you know old. Hitler, <laughs> he likes his his uh, uh, occult. occult type stuff. Yeah, yeah. So they're basically trying to make Nazi supermen, and in the process, they're experimenting on people and basically creating uh, uh, monsters um, that have like super strength and stuff. And so they basically the the story is them, you know, infiltrating this base that's you know has these supernatural elements in it, and uh, basically uh, just a well done. Um, action movie um and yeah i was i was kind of surprised by it. i really ended up enjoying it um you guys have you seen this no no I well, think I, I, yeah you made me watch yeah. it and like i i don't know i just didn't really connect with it it's really I, I don't know i'm that way with a lot of action movies unless there's a lot something else going on but yeah i, I don't know why all right, but yeah, I uh, I would highly recommend it to people who haven't seen it. I um, I, I really enjoyed it and was surprised by it. It's got um, Kurt Russell's son in it, Wyatt Russell, um, and I thought he was really good in it. I think he is going to be in that um, um, Winter Soldier and Falcon um, show that uh, Disney Plus is going to be doing. Um, okay, so yeah, my number 10, Overlord. AJ will come around to your number nine. Number nine movie, Horrible Bosses. I would think for comedies. <laughs> I just love comedy movies. Uh, I thought the idea of, you know, having a bad boss and people working together to commit, like, what, the perfect murder, right? Where somebody else kills somebody for you. Uh, just a funny plot, you know, uh, funny stuff ensued. Uh I think Charlie from uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia is hilarious in everything he does. So, uh, yeah, number nine, Horrible Bosses. I think, like, I know I saw that and I don't remember a ton about it. Yeah. I remember, like, there were some things I thought were funny, but on the whole, it, it didn't seem like it worked for me. But I don't know. Something about Jennifer Aniston is kind of actually unlikable for me. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we got an Aniston <laughs> hater. Yeah, it's been a while since I saw that movie too. <laughs> the one bit I remember like making me laugh was like I think Jamie Foxx's character is a guy named like Motherfucker Jones, and like <laughs> at one point they're like, "How'd you get that name or something?" And he's like, "Well, you know, my mom was sleeping in bed," and they're like, "What?" And he's like, "And." I went in there and I snuck in there and they're, they're like, what? And like, eventually he's like, and I stole some money from her <laughs> from that point on. I was called motherfucker. I really fucked her over. Yeah. So, <laughs> if I ever have another son, <laughs> motherfucker Jones is up there. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, yeah, that's a movie I saw once and I don't remember it super well, but you, you really liked it. Sound like. Uh, I just like comedy movies, and I, I haven't seen a ton of movies in the last movies in the last ten years. But uh, I thought Horrible Boss was something that I I could stand to see again. So yeah, <laughs> it works for me. 
One weird thing I kind of found about this list is like, I always say I'm not really into horror, but I was kind of surprised how much horror kind of slipped into my list or had horror elements. And then, I well, there's some that are maybe pretty funny, but um, not as much comedy as I would have thought. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. I don't think there's really a, a single comedy on my list. I mean, there's movies with funny stuff in them, but I don't think I have any straight up comedies on my list. So what number? We're on nine? Mm -hmm. Number nine. So yeah, talking about horror, my number nine is Get Out, which is horror. And I, I just think it's very smart horror. It's kind of got the social, you know, structure going on. It's more psychological. It's, you know, relevant to the conversation about racism. And I just thought it was just really good. There's a lot of tension, just... Yeah, creepy stuff. Yeah, I, I did see Get Out, and I don't watch a lot of horror movies, but I did see it just because it got a lot of buzz, you know? Yeah. Uh, there's stuff I want to talk about about it, but I don't want to spoil it for people who haven't seen it. I will say just one one thing that annoyed me about it is there there's a scene in the movie where it kind of reveals something. And it's kind of something that I suspected before they revealed it. But then they 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 reveal this thing through um, like a photograph that the the main character finds, and then in the very next scene they they drop the hammer on what's going on, and I'm like, they should have had him discover either take that scene out completely or have him find that photo later on because it it basically takes all the air out of the next scene i thought so that's just one minor gripe about it is i thought editing wise if they would have rearranged that they could have got a little more out of that reveal moment yeah i've never seen get out but you haven't I've heard seen about it? it i've heard yeah I've you heard should check it out it's subtlety. pretty good i need to watch it yeah as far as horror movies go i it's it's good mm -hmm. and like it's one of those like uh topical horror movies you know yeah all right. Anything else about uh, Get Out? All right. Um, so my number nine movie, and and I kind of struggled with if I wanted to put this on the list simply because it's a very new movie. It only came out um, last year, and I've actually only only seen it twice, once in theaters and once at home. And I know you're not a <laughs> big fan of it simply <laughs> because I, I saw it with you, um, but I think you're wrong. Um, but unlike you, I like a good whodunit, and so what I'm talking about is, of course, Knives Out came out uh, last November and yeah I just I think it's a really well written and well crafted movie I like that it kind of takes a um, you, you find out very soon in the movie that it's not your typical um, who done it kind of formula and I also just really like um, you know Daniel Craig's character in the movie um, which luckily I think they said um, that they might do um, another movie with his character you know as this kind of southern detective you know and put him in a, in a different movie which I would be all for because I, I really did enjoy this movie I think it's like I said very well uh, written great uh, ensemble cast uh, with Daniel Craig and Ana de Armas and a lot of different people. Um, AJ, have you seen this one yet? No, I haven't seen it yet. Man. I do plan on seeing it. You should see. I think it's on Amazon Prime right now. Um, but yeah, I, I I really liked it. Now, I know you didn't, but you 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 don't like really mystery or whodunit to begin yeah, with. Yeah, I didn't necessarily hate it, but the mystery genre in general, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of. It's, um, it's one of the things where the plot has to fit together, and this one fits together very well. It's a million like little pieces. They fit together like clockwork. It runs. It it all seems to work pretty well. It's just doesn't do a lot for me. That's all. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, I just I I really like the who done it you know genre. Um, to me, if they would put out like you know one of these Agatha Christie type uh, mystery stories every year, I would be happy. Um, I don't think we get enough movies like this. I would like to see uh, more. But yeah. Yeah, great movie. My number nine, Knives Out. So now we'll go to AJ, your number eight. Number eight, I have uh, actually Wood last year on board with the horror genre, uh, Cabin in the Woods. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I uh, I just thought it was amazing. I, I was expecting one thing when I went to the movie. I, I thought it'd just be, you know, a regular horror movie. Yeah, slasher. it's very different. Yeah, it's very, very it escalates very quickly, <laughs> and uh, I just I was pleasantly surprised to see something different like that. You know, where they take a movie that you think is going to be 
just uh, one way and they they completely transform it and make it into something else. And, yeah, uh, that definitely right angles on that one. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen this movie as well um, simply because uh, – and, and I, I watched it and I already kind of knew – um, about it before I watched it. So I, it would have been nice to have that more of a surprise element, I guess. Um, but yeah, yeah. I like it for someone who doesn't watch a lot of things in the horror genre. That is another one I watch just kind of, kind of the, the buzz around it. So are we still, are we moving on? Well, I was going to say, doesn't that movie, wasn't that, does that have Hemsworth in it? Yeah. I think Chris or Lee, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, I think that was like one of his like first kind of big roles or something like that. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, the guy that plays Thor. I don't yeah, Chris, Chris Hemsworth. Hemsworth. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Cabin in the Woods, uh, definitely a unique term. Yeah, that didn't pop into my head, but that's another one I did like that. It's definitely got the, some Lovecraftian stuff going. And no, it's good. All right. Man, I'm going for another horror. Number eight, Hereditary. I don't know if either of you have seen that. I did. I did. But again, really creepy. Again, it starts out... Very psychological, uh, family in torment, a lot of, you know, problems in the family that morphs into this supernatural horror. And I, I, it was definitely, it creeped me out. It, it stayed in my brain for a couple of days. Yeah, I will say it's definitely um, well-crafted. Um, I think uh, uh, Tony Collette gives a really good performance. Yeah. yeah, she's really good. Yeah, very good. Um, it's, you know, it's one of those things that where it got to the end and you kind of see, you, uh, you know, what the kind of enemy or I guess antagonist of the movie is and what uh, that I, I, I kind of thought was underwhelming, I guess. Um, but, um, still it's a, it's a movie that if you're interested in, in, um, horror at all, I, I would say yes, definitely do. Um, definitely some creepy stuff in it and, and some, some really solid performances. All right. Anything else on that? All right. Good. So, um, my next movie, uh, came out in 2014 and I think this is actually the only movie on my list that I didn't see in theaters. I discovered this, um, later on as well as, um, and this is actually a sequel. This is the raid two. Um, now the reason I think, I think the raid movies have the best fight choreography of just about anything. Now, to be fair, I, I I haven't gone back and watched like you know the Bruce Lee movies from the '70s or anything like this, but the Raid movies I think are so much fun, and I think there is enough. Um, now, the first movie I think it's called the Raid Redemption is a very simple story, and in fact, it's what if, I don't know if you guys have seen the um, the Dread movie, the Judge Dread movie from. Uh, oh yeah, the, the new one. The newer one. Oh, I'd rather watch the older one. Uh, no, what, you a, what a pile of crap. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Yeah, but I would. But but that movie borrows heavily from the first raid movie, which is basically um there's this, you know, mafia guy um holed up in this this building and these group of cops go in and kind of level by level have to go up and like, you know, fight all these guys. And then the raid two um picks up after that movie and the lead character is now like uh, you know, an undercover cop. Um, and, but you just, you got to watch this movie for the fights alone. Like th there is some insane fights in there. Like, and there's like this woman, um, who fights people with hammers. <laughs> she just like beats the shit out of people with hammers. Uh, there's another guy that beats people with like a, a baseball and baseball bat. Uh, and, um, there's this one like popular fight in the movie that takes place in a kitchen and it's like so insane. You you just watch this and you're like, how long did it take them to shoot this? It's it's so crazy. And it's it's one of those things where like I'm like, I wish there was, you know, one Batman fight in a Batman movie that was anything close to the fights in this movie. Uh it's so entertaining. It's so well done. And and it's not even though you go for the action, I think there there is enough of the story outside the action to make you care about the characters and, and draw you in. And uh, so, yeah, either of you guys, have you seen this movie? No. 
I have not seen that, and it hasn't even been on my radar. I have, I have no idea what you're even talking about. I, I highly, highly recommend these movies, um, um, both the the Raid and the Raid Two. But the Raid Two is is better. Um, I think I think you would be surprised um, by the fights in these movies and how how great it is. All right, um, so yeah, what are we on now? Are we on all the way seven? to seven? seven. This is going to be a long episode. Well, that's good. That's good. All right, AJ, you're number seven. Another comedy for me. I, you know, I suffer from depression, and uh, comedy movies really cheer me up. They they really bring light into my life. I think they depress me even more. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, number seven for me is Spy with Melissa McCarthy. Oh, okay. there was some funny stuff. In yeah, there. <laughs> I yeah. love the cat stuff. <laughs> yeah, the cat lady. <laughs> oh my gosh! So Melissa McCarthy starts out. She's an agent who is basically in the ear of Jude Law, who's like a super agent who's a like James Bond type character and uh, something happens and she has to enter the field and uh, sh she gets the portrayal of being like a cat lady who's uh, very quiet and subdued but she's actually a really loud personality in the movie and she does a lot of crazy stuff and it's just hilar hilarity ensues so great movie I loved it and at one point uh, one lady calls another lady an asthmatic big bird <laughs> and I thought that was just the funniest thing I ever heard I feel like she's somebody who could pop out at your like family reunion and be like, that's our crazy auntie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I saw spy and I don't remember like a, a ton of like the actual like jokes and things, but I do remember liking it. And I do remember la like thinking it was definitely um, that Paul Feig's guys like best movie by far. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, that is one that surprised me where I'm like, hey, I wasn't expecting much from this movie, but it's actually pretty damn funny. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> what do I got here? Number seven. Uh, number seven, I'm going with Mad Max Fury Road. Just thought it was solid. I love the visual stuff. A lot of times with the action movies, I get kind of bored. I feel like they are, they just, uh, there's too much action. They just don't work. But that one definitely, a uh, great story. Just a lot of fun stuff. A lot of fun visuals. A lot just crazy uh, just really liked it. Yeah, I absolutely love Mad Max Fury Road. And and I still, to this day, have not seen any of the original Mad Max movies. <laughs> yeah, I've seen them. <laughs> have you, do you like those? Uh, yeah, they're still fun. Uh, so I think I think the second one works the best, probably. But yeah, no, they're, they're worth a watch. The Mad, Mad Max Fury Road, that is one of those movies I watch it and... I'm like, I don't know how they pulled some of this stuff off without killing like 19 people. Well, yeah, because like so much of it's practical. If you watch the stunt like footage, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, you got those like guys they call pole cats or whatever that are on those like poles. Yeah, like, these have to be like circus performers. It's yeah, it's crazy. so crazy. Um, yeah, just watching it, I, I'm like, I'm like, I don't know how they did this stuff. It's 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 crazy. It, have you guys ever heard that like? Uh, the backstory in that movie there they say that um like charlie Theron and um uh, tom hardy um really like did not get along on that movie oh like they really like had, I, I really love tom hardy but he does strike me as someone who probably has some ego <laughs> that could be like he's one of my favorite actors he's yeah. yeah he's he's great in almost any everything he's in and he so does some of the best voice work out there and charlie Theron, man she's awesome too. yeah she's on it pretty much everything she's in she's, she's still great. gorgeous too man oh yeah. how old is she she's, she's probably like 50 yeah somewhere really? in there yeah she wow. is. or at she's least close to it she yeah. yeah she is she is gorgeous yeah. Yeah, um, the difference i think what was the first the first, first movie was about gas right like oil was that the well, commodity? Well, they they are they do have a shortage of gas, and that's part of the fight. But above that, even is water, and like oh. the the one guy controls all the water. Yeah, so. Immortan Joe. Immortan Joe, man, and and they really like know how to ugly people up on that movie, man. <laughs> yeah, like and that guy with like the gout in his leg or whatever with the yeah. big old swelled up foot. I love when they got the huge ladies milking them. That's so like oh, fucked yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah. What the heck is this? And that yeah. talks just about the crazy visual stuff, but I, I love that stuff. Yeah. 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 It's a great movie. I I will also say like um, the the score for the movie is is pretty good too. There's a uh, 
a track I downloaded called Brothers in Arms from from the Mad Max Fury Road uh, soundtrack. And I, I've listened to that thing so many times. It's awesome. So uh, musically, just highly recommend that as well. Um, yeah, great movie. Great movie. All right. Anything else for right now? I think I'm good there. All right. Um, so my next pick... Uh, uh, is going to piss some people off out there. I'm ready. Well, maybe not you guys, because I think um, much like you guys, uh, uh, I'm not like a hard... I'm a, I'm a very casual Star Wars fan. Like the original trilogy, I've probably seen those movies, I would say, less than five times. And I know, AJ, you were saying yesterday you've never watched them. Um, yeah, that, that's probably going to get more hate than anything yeah. you're going to say. <laughs> that's, that's true. Um, and But because I'm such a casual Star Wars fan, I have no problem saying that my favorite Star Wars movie and my next pick for this uh, list is Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens. Um, now, now um, I will say this, this movie, um, um, a lot of people knock it because they say it, it's basically a retelling of um, Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. And I kind of totally agree with that. But I think it's a better telling of that story. And I think it's got um, the actors are uh, better, you know, nothing against Mark Hamill. I think he over the years, he's became a better actor, but he was very new, you know, in the original Star Wars and, and not a great actor. And I just, I, I just really like, I, I had low expectations going into the movie just because I wasn't a big Star Wars fan. And I left going, you know what? This was a ton of fun and I can't wait to see the next one, which ended up not, <laughs> not panning out very well. Um, um, but this movie, I, I love it. I, I have a, a ball every time I watch it. Is that the one where they introduce Ray for the first time? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I like that movie too, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like I liked it. Um, I agree with the the recycling of plots, and it's something I'm not really fond of. It's something you see, like Spielberg has done a lot. Like, you know, you see it in some of the Indiana Jones where he recycles plot points or... Um, I'm blanking now. I know he's. I've I've spoken about this and other things. Back to the Future. I think it actually works in, but at the same time, you get a lot of that repetition. Uh, but personally, I, I I would prefer a fresh story um, in that regard. You know, it's it's crazy that you say that because um, I just heard a story um, the other day. Um, um, John Cryer, um, who played like Ducky in that like 1980s comedy. And he's, he's been, uh, he was on that two and a half men show with Charlie Sheen. Okay. And, yeah. And, he, and now he plays Lex Luthor on the Supergirl right. CW show. Anyway, um, he, I guess, auditioned um, for back to the future um, back in the day. Okay. And um, he said the script he got was, was very different where the time machine was not a DeLorean for, for the Marty role. Yeah. Okay. And, um, it wasn't a DeLorean, and and the thing that made it work was um, Coca Cola for some reason. Oh, like they, they, like they poured Coca Cola into it, and that's what oh, made it no. work. I, I mean, that's classic product placement, yeah. But he said it the way it ended was instead of the whole like clock tower or whatever, it ended in this way where like um, like he was trying to get back to the future. He was in the past, and for some reason there was like a nuclear bomb that was going to go off. And, and, but he, the, like, he wasn't gonna, the time machine wasn't gonna go off in time to save him. So, what did he do? He climbed into a friggin' fr refrigerator. And you, you know where this is going. Uh, Steven Spielberg would later recycle that for the <laughs> shitty He's like, Indiana I, Jones. I've, I've had this idea yeah. bounce around in my head for, you know, 30 years. And it is time for this refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> and then everyone hates. He's like, ah, maybe, maybe it would have played better in the eighties. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, as far as uh, yeah, Star Wars Episode Seven: Force Awakens. I I still really enjoy watching that movie. I think it's a, a yeah. A I, I thought about throwing a Star Wars in there, and I, I didn't do it. But um, I think even more than those movies, I really the HBO with the Baby Yoda thing. That's was, Disney Plus. Oh, Disney Plus. What did I say? Yeah, said, yeah. HBO, yeah. Uh, but uh, it was just a great story. It's it's a reluctant dad story, I think. And I don't know. It resonated. I had a lot of fun with that. I, I still want to see The Mandalorian. I haven't watched it yet because I, I'm, I'm just waiting for 
some more stuff to stack up on Disney Plus before I get it. Like I'll I'll probably wait till I get one of those like uh, Disney Marvel shows on there, and then I'll I'll get you know, it for a month. Yeah, get it for a month and kind of go through all the stuff I want to see on it. <laughs> That's what I'm doing with HBO Max now. I just uh, subscribe to that, and I'll I'll I'm we're going through like Watchmen and stuff like that. So, um, all right. So uh, let's see what number are we up to now? I think six. Yeah, I'm moving on to six. All right, AJ, your number six. All right, at six, I have Kingsman: The Secret Service. Okay. So, a uh, story about a young kid who, uh, I guess, drops out of military school, gets in trouble, and uh, his father, a long time ago, was in the uh, service uh, for the, I think, the Kingsmen, and uh, he reaches out to them for help in his uh, trying times, and uh, he actually gets a uh, gets a chance to uh, join them, uh, gets to try out, and uh, you know he he helps fight evil and uh try to save the world so it's a it's a fun story uh it's pretty lighthearted. the the villain is kind of a comedic character so uh yeah i mean it's, it's it falls in line with like uh, a, a movie about spies and assassins or whatever they are and uh just the comedy that goes with it yeah, I've I've I also saw this movie. I actually saw this movie in theaters, and uh, this one also also based on a comic book. Although I didn't read the comic until afterwards, a comic book by uh, Mark Miller. Um, it, it's one of those movies I I wanted to like it more than I did. I think I think there, there's a couple scenes I really like. Like um, they have this whole like big church fight uh, to Lynyrd Skynyrd, and, and it's really well choreographed and a lot of fun. Um, so th there's moments of the movie I really like, but as a whole, I don't know. It didn't hit me that well. Have you seen it? Yeah, I mean, I I think for the the genre, it was a decent movie. It's not something I was loved loved, but it seemed like I enjoyed it. Yeah. The second one's really bad. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if one. I saw the second one. It's not good. It's not good. Um, but yeah, the um, yeah. I mean, I liked it okay, um, but um, mostly that scene is what stands out to me. I really have fun with that scene. <laughs> All right. Anything else on that one? No, I'm good. All right. So I'm on six. So I don't know if either of you will have watched this one, but I'm a huge Darren Aronofsky fan. And so another kind of horror esque is Mother. I I have not seen this one, and and most of the review critical reviews were not kind to it. But I, I can understand why a lot of people wouldn't like it. It's very surreal. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's kind of hard to follow, kind of confusing. But under all that, there's a lot of deeper symbolism about you know partnership and parenthood and fame and and the destructiveness of all this and the cycles we go through. And yeah, just aesthetically uh, it's something i really enjoyed now i heard that it's kind of like it also like a metaphor for um like um climate change and how we treat the planet is that is there anything to that i don't know if i read that into it but it's like it's also one of those things where it's very open to interpretation and probably people could read what they wanted it into it okay. in a lot of ways so yeah there's that possibility all right, uh, number six on my list. Now, this is an uh, another movie that a lot of people uh, uh, don't like, um, and it's uh, my first uh, superhero movie actually on on this list. Um, and I will say, as the same as a lot of people, I would say the the DC movies um, this past decade have not been the best. But I really like 2013's Man of Steel, kind of their first entry into um, the their attempt at a shared universe. Um, and I, I kind of get why the people who who maybe don't like it don't like it. Um, um, because then I'll, I'll spoil a bit because I think everyone who's wanted to watch this movie has probably watched it. Yeah, I, I need some of the plot points again because I'm not sure if it's one I've watched or not because I skipped a lot of DC stuff. Um, well, I, I, this was the one I was actually watching maybe a month or two ago and you wa came in and watched at least the last like half of it. Is that the one where he's fighting the general? What's his name? General Zod. Okay. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm glad you, you said that. that. Uh, so that's Michael Shannon, the same guy from Shape of Water. Right. Found his name. <laughs> <laughs> he's been doing a lot of work. Actually. He has. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's one of those movies where like, um, to where like when I seen the preview for it, it had, you know, uh, the 
a scene from Krypton, and I, I like kind of rolled my eyes, and we're like, ah, oh, we're doing Krypton again. We really, you know, need this again. But that that first like ten minutes or so with um, with Russell Crowe where they're on Krypton, it, it's great. And I'm like, you know what? I really like this. Um, now, the, the one thing that probably loses a lot of people is like at the end of the movie, he does end up um, uh, killing Zod, and I think that's where a lot of people just they're like, Superman doesn't kill, and and but to me, I'm like. In the context of the movie, he's really only been Superman for like a, a day or two. So, like to me, you know, uh, him not having a handle on his powers, or or maybe you know, uh, knowing all the responsibility that comes along with his powers and doing that, I could buy that. It makes sense to me. But a lot of people just don't like that leap. Um, I also really like that Lois discovers his identity in the movie because I just feel that's, you know, more realistic and it makes Lois look like a smarter character, which she is. Um, and, uh, and also, um, uh, I will say, um, the Hans Zimmer score to Man of Steel is phenomenal. Um, I've also listened to that countless times since that's come out, highly recommend it, um, to people. Um, but yeah, you guys have any thoughts about it? Have you seen it? Yeah, it's, uh, I like the movie. It was uh, pretty well made, I'd say. And uh, I did like the fact that he killed Zod at the end. I, <laughs> oh, so you huge, actually not, liked it. I, I'm not a huge comic book guy anyway, right. so it didn't bother me that he did that. And there was a choice, right? He was going to either you know, hurt other people or he had to do right. what he did. So he did that. You know, It was fine with me. Yeah, I, I don't really remember a lot other than I just didn't like it very much. But Superman is also a character that I don't like. And it's a, a common thing when people, you know, amateur writers make a character that's too strong and too good and they're basically can do no wrong. They can't be harmed and it, it's just boring. But also the sheer amount of action you get in some of these fight scenes is boring. And then, you know, flying through a bunch of skyscrapers and killing a bunch of people is... And that's the other thing that people didn't annoying like. Annoying and boring. I mean, that's another thing is people are like, you know, Superman, he, he would have drawn Zod away from the city to, to save lives. Yeah. I'm like, again, yes, a seasoned Superman would do that. But a guy that's been Superman for a couple of days maybe wouldn't have the wherewithal to do that. And... and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're one of those shit. people. The only thing that works for, for for Superman for me is really the relationship. That's what makes him human. Yeah. Well, I will say, you know, uh, you know, Superman's one of those characters I like despite agreeing with a lot of the common um, problems people have with him about him being too powerful, you know, not having enough uh, weaknesses and all that. But yeah, I, I've I've read and I've um, you know watched a lot of Superman stories that I actually you know ended up liking. Um, so so despite his flaws um, as a character, I do like him, and I, I can totally understand people in that third act of Man of Steel thinking you know ah, there's just a lot of destruction and maybe a little bit too much action. But for me, they did make me care enough about the characters in that movie to where I was engaged and I didn't just totally shut off and be like it's action overload like I w did on like Aquaman which is a movie I don't care for at all. I did not even attempt Aquaman there is that other one is it called Batman vs. Superman because that's essentially yes what story and it's bad <laughs> and the thing is the one Superman story I like is The Dark Knight Returns the comic by Frank Miller right so freaking good so brilliant so amazing Agreed. And they took probably the best Batman story out there and uh, fucked it up. Yeah, well, and, and that's a whole other conversation. But yeah, it Bat Batman v Superman, that's, I think, the one of the biggest reasons why it's so disappointing is they really should have just done a totally standalone telling of... Um, yeah, Dark Knight Returns. Movie. They should have yeah. made, uh, you know, as much as I like Henry Cavill, I, they should have got a, a different guy for Superman, different, you know, put it in a totally different right. universe I, by itself. You're right. And, and, and told that story. Um, the thing about Batman v Superman, and a lot of people have a problem with uh, Ben Affleck as Batman. I, I think he actually did a good job as Batman. It's just that is not the version of Batman you want in a, a mainline shared universe Batman story. You don't want a Batman that's okay with killing people essentially in and kind of wanton destruction like he is in that movie it's, it's just i i don't know who they got 
you know, Marvel has a guy named Kevin Feige that's kind of at the, the center of all their movies. And and he really goes, he, he's kind of the key to what makes that universe feel cohesive and, and kind of work. And I don't think DC has someone. Uh, yeah, they definitely have some internal problem that's not working. Yeah. And I don't know what it is, but something's not working. Yeah, I, I think, and, and DC's in a weird spot because they, they've been doing movies that are you know carry over some of the same characters but aren't aren't they're more standalone like uh we watched birds of prey earlier this year which again is a movie uh, i i didn't really like that carries over like margot robbie from suicide squad as harley quinn but it it kind of um so it's kind of still in the same universe i guess but it does its own thing and it's not really connected to the other stuff i i think that could have still worked but uh, it was just garbage. Yeah, yeah, it's yet another DC movie. It was that, just badly written. Yeah, for for me with the DC movies, like uh, at least the ones uh, starting with Man of Steel, like Man of Steel is easily my highest pick. Uh, Wonder Woman's like an okay. It's it definitely suffers from the third act is terrible, so it just ends up being okay. And then all the other ones are just varying degrees of trash. Um, I yeah, they, it, it's really disappointing. But you know, it, it'll come back around. I'm sure DC will start making good superhero movies at some point, and Marvel will probably go on the decline. Um, but yeah, anyway, that was my pick, uh, Man of Steel. So what are we on number five? Yeah. Down to five. All right, AJ. Yeah, and at number five, I have It Follows. So a horror movie where, yep. uh, I mean, essentially something, a creature follows you everywhere you go until it catches up to you and then it's game over for you. Cause I don't know about you, but I've had these nightmares. <laughs> yeah. I've had this, yeah. especially after seeing this movie, I was scared for days. I, I had a nightmare that night. And like, again, <laughs> another like week or two later, I had the same freaking just horrible something following me fucking nightmare. And that was actually, it's not on my list, but it's in my honorable mentions because that was a, that was a good horror movie. Now, this is one I haven't seen, but this, this is like the kind of like an STD type of thing, right? Yeah. What? Right. There, there's like, the thing is, there's like an order. So this thing knows, like you fuck somebody and then they're number one, but you're number two. So after it kills number one, it'll come back to you. So it's like <laughs> you pass it down the list, but then like it kills one, then it's it goes back down the line. Mm, so, it, like, if you're number one, if you fuck somebody else, will it go to them? Right. They first. become number one. Oh, and so you, you get moved to number two. So as long as you keep fucking people, you're good. Right. Yeah. You you just don't know when that person died or anything, so you don't know when it could possibly start turning around and coming for you. Hmm. Interesting. And it just walks a straight line to you. So, I mean, you know, wherever you are, wherever you went. Yeah, it's just walking straight at you wherever you go. Oh, yeah. so it, it could, like, walk right through the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, 24 hours a day, it's just walking towards you. Now, what if, like, a skyscraper gets in its way? Does it walk around it? Well, you know, they don't parse on that. But, yeah, essentially, <laughs> it's got to go around it. I don't know about the water part either because it, it didn't enter that pool. Yeah, either. at the end, well, the thing is, I think they kind of break their you know their rules a little bit like it i think they slip a little bit on that but yeah. essentially it's supposed to come yeah straight for you yeah but yeah water high water when it knows it's trying to they're trying to kill it or something like it stops and just kind of waits yeah but no definitely uh definitely creepy a terrifying movie <laughs> <laughs> all right you're uh number five number five moving into some sci-fi the thing is, I love sci-fi, and almost all of it's really bad, which kind of breaks my heart. But uh, Ex Machina, very cerebral, very modern take on AI. Um, just a horror horror show, creepy, weird characters, uh, just a lot of fun. Yeah, this is a, a movie I did see, and um, I, I, I liked it okay. Now, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to spoil anything for people who haven't seen it, but... At the very end of the movie, um, the the you know robot woman, yeah, she, she makes a choice concerning yeah one of the other characters, yeah, and I'm okay with that choice, and I think a lot of people like the probably that's what makes them really like the movie. Now, in my head though, do you think if she would not have made that choice, and they left together, do you think uh, that'd be a worse ending? You think so? Yeah. Okay. Because in my mind, I kind of thought it would still be an interesting ending, and I thought I may maybe would like that more. But 
I wouldn't, but I tend to like tragic endings more because they're more rare and they have more shock value. So I don't know. That's maybe my personal taste. Okay. And it, and it says more about what the character's been doing this whole time. That's you true. Know, what's in her head? That's what she's true. Thinking, what were her motivations? That's like, another thing yeah. is like you can't know their motivations and they might be smart enough to fool you. So that's that's part of the the horror and the the essential question asked by the entire movie. All right. Anything else on that one? Uh, no. Well, um, my next one's going to be quick because we we. Um, already talked about it quite a bit. Uh, my number five is Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah, love the movie. Um, uh, you know, it's it's one of those movies that's really simple. You know, uh, they go one way and then they turn around and go the other way. But it, it, it's so uh, entertaining, so well done. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's a. I mean, that's a common plot is the road. You know, you yeah. have a road, you have a bunch of obstacles along the way. And that's what it is. It's a road movie, and and it's really good. And also, uh, man, uh, George Miller. Nobody has ever made a desert look more beautiful than George <laughs> Miller. That movie is just looks gorgeous, and it's you know it's in a desert, and it just looks fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I I think they've um, um, they're also making like a prequel Mad Max movie now that uh, is like the the origin of Furiosa's character. I could see that. I mean, I don't know if I'd step away from Max if I was making the choice, but I mean, she was definitely a solid character. Interesting. Yeah. So I could see that. Yeah. um, Man. And George Miller, he's like a, you know, an older guy. I think he's like in his seventies. Yeah. Um, Yeah, Well, I don't know exactly, but yeah, he's up there. (laughs) I think one of his other movies was like, like babe Two, pig in the city or something. Yeah. There was something funny like that. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, <laughs> Mad Max, you know, blew me away. It's it's fantastic. All right, so AJ, you're number four. We're getting down there. Yeah. Now I didn't I didn't want to put too many superhero movies in, but I couldn't help myself. I love superhero movies. Right. And uh, I had to go with Avengers for number four. It's That's my, one I considered for my list. Uh, yeah. It. it I mean, the, all the Marvel movies up until then, I wasn't very impressed with. But the way it tied everything together and put the characters, you know, in the same room and and gave them a good story to go with to the whole invasion and everything that happened. I thought it was a good movie. I thought it was well made. And, uh, yeah, I could definitely support those. Uh, my favorite character was Captain America. So, yeah, I got behind him. Yeah, I was kind of the same. I, I, I didn't want to put too many of those in. And that one didn't quite make my list. I, I did really like Avengers. At the same time, there's, the cast is so gigantic Yeah, that... I mean, I think they did a great job, but you could tell that it was pulling at the seams a little bit. I mean, that could have been probably like a 10-hour movie. Yeah. You know, it, it was just it was so much to cram in there. And for, you know, for what they had to do, I think they did a pretty admirable job. But it was still, it was on the edges for, for me on that part. You know, it's going to sound weird because I'm such a big, you know, comic book and superhero fan that I was not excited at all when Avengers came out. And I think it's because I had no – like, even though I had liked a lot of the lead-up movies to it, I was like, okay, here, here we go. They're going to cram, you know, 10 bags of shit in a five-pound bag. It's yeah. just going to be a fucking mess, and it's going to be terrible. And that's the thing that really impressed me about that Avengers movie is how well balanced it is. I think all the characters um, kind of get their due. Um, it's – it uh, you know – yeah, the size of the task is yeah, it's it is almost unbelievable. And they kind of finally make Hulk like a good character that you actually give a shit about. Yeah, and there have been a lot of Hulk movies that just sucked, and and yeah, they finally gave him a little humanity. So uh, yeah, he's coming off a little better. And yeah, I was just I really impressed by that movie, and and yeah, just. Um, how well balanced it is, and and they, as far as the balance, they they um they really continue that with um, like Infinity War and, and those movies where I'm just like, wow, I'm I can't believe they pulled this off. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Avengers was a pleasant surprise to me. I I walked out of that movie being like, wow, they did it. They actually pulled this off, and and everything you know melded together. It was really great. Yeah. Yeah, and and you actually you like the characters, you know, yeah. all of them, like Hawkeye, even you know. Uh, Black Widow, like those are characters that I thought I wouldn't 
give a give a damn about. But. I never liked Hawkeye. <laughs> I wish he would have fucking went down that cliff, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is definitely the blandest one. And yeah, I was kind of the same way. Like when he was going. Through I know the- they reversed on me a couple times. I was like, here he goes, here he goes. <laughs> I was like, it just didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. When he was running, I'm just like, no, just let him go. Let him go. <laughs> could, could take one for the team there, Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah he's yeah he's one of the the blander characters um now i will say uh, a couple of years ago they they uh, a guy named matt fraction did a run in the comics on hawkeye and, and made him uh, a much more like funny and interesting character than he is in in these movies but um but yeah still avengers yeah really good and, and i kind of like how they they repurposed Loki from the the Thor movie, making him the villain, and he was really great too. Yeah, Tom Hiddleston. Yeah. All right, your number four. My number four, another Marvel, Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just a solid entry. Just a lot of fun. Got a little '80s vibe going, and I mean, good action adventure, good hero story, and just just a romp in the park. So. Yeah, I um, for me, I think. Thor Ragnarok is is probably the the funniest and most entertaining of the the Thor movies. I I think from just a story perspective, I think I still like the original Thor the most out of those movies, just because there's there's more of a character arc in the first Thor movie, which I I like. But yeah, um, Thor Ragnarok definitely has a a, a cool feel. Um, you know, I've never watched the the Flash Gordon movie, but I I think he took from what I understand like some inspiration from from Flash Gordon and a few others like '80s type things. Yeah, other than like a couple pop references, I don't know much about Flash Gordon. Yeah, I don't really either. But um, but yeah, Thor Ragnarok definitely a lot of fun. What do you what yeah. do you think? In the comics, Thor is no fun at all. You know, he's very serious and lame, kind of. You know. Yeah, character. he's definitely not the, my favorite character. He, he has, he's very powerful. I mean, when yeah. you talk about story arcs, I, I, he's kind of one of the ones that hasn't had a ton of story arc. I feel like, like he's still very much a similar character, other than he got fat at one point. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, the, the arc. <laughs> <laughs> he got depressed. He got fat. I mean, the first movie, you go from him being a very um, kind of arrogant guy. He's still kind yeah. of arrogant, though. It's, it, it's toned down, maybe. Yes, but by the end of the first movie, you know, he he becomes worthy to right. wield the hammer, yeah. and he kind of you know you know learns his place a little bit, and so that's why I still overall prefer the first movie, just because you get that that character arc. No, I like the first one. Yeah, I mean uh, the the second one is definitely one of the the blandest movies of the MCU. Yeah, it, not, it wasn't the best. Like not terrible, just bland. It's just yeah. okay. So my number four pick is a movie that uh, came out just uh, a couple years ago, 2018, uh, Bad Times at the El Royale. Now, I know you've seen this because I showed you this movie. Yeah, we watched it, and that was one that wasn't on my radar, but uh, yeah, it's definitely a fun flick. Yeah, so this movie basically um, is about, there's this hotel, the El Royale, and uh, basically all these uh, characters end up uh, coming to the hotel. They all have kind of their uh, interesting and various reasons. And and then, you know, uh, they all kind of uh, intersect on this one crazy night. And um, uh, this movie is directed by a guy, guy named Drew Goddard. And one of the things that kind of annoyed me when this movie came out is a lot of the people I saw review it were like, oh, this guy's just doing a bad Quentin Tarantino impression. Or they're they're, they're like, he's a poor man's Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> because the, the story at points is told not in a non-linear fashion. Like, you'll be with a certain character for a while, and then at points, it'll switch to a different character, kind of give you their backstory, and then kind of um, show you how they uh, intersect with a scene that you already have observed. And they're like, oh, that that's, you know, Quentin Tarantino's thing. And I'm like, he doesn't own that. And, and and I'm sure there was movies that came before that did that. Like, I think Rashomon is like a famous movie that kind yeah, of Yeah, there are that. some. I know he did get some some for being nonlinear, being kind of one of the front runners at least. But um, yeah, I, d- I didn't get a Quentin Tarantino vibe from that movie. I love Quentin Tarantino and there's only one. So, And a uh, great uh, ensemble cast, uh, Jeff Bridges, um, 
Cynthia Erivo, who plays the um, African American woman who's a singer in the movie, uh, John Hamm, Chris Hemsworth. Hemsworth, uh, I, I like in this movie because he has a very plays a very different you know type of character. What's interesting about that is like he'd been in a number of movies that I'd seen, and like I, I never connected him as being anybody until you know he was Thor. <laughs> I was like, oh, he was in that movie. <laughs> Also, uh, a great uh, soundtrack to this movie with lots of like Motown hits and things. Uh, yeah, um, have you seen this movie? No, I haven't. Oh man, highly recommend it. A lot of fun. Just uh, really great movie. I'll check it out. All right, man. We're we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Number three, AJ. All right, number three. You know, I'm I'm Marvel heavy at the top over here. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, that's fine. For me, it's going to be Deadpool. I thought okay. Deadpool was a uh, unique, you know, it was very different. I I was not familiar with the character at all, and uh, seeing this like crazy, out of this world, you know, just absurd character uh, doing R-rated things in a, a Marvel movie, I just <laughs> I loved it, you know. Yeah. And uh, the story was good too. I thought, you know, like the relationship he had with his girlfriend, you know, how it developed and what happened over time. Uh, him trying to fight what you know his illness that he he uh, got. Yeah, I mean all of that. It really it made sense to me why things were happening. Uh, you know how he let himself get put in a position where he might get taken advantage of, and uh, the the anger and the uh, the action that takes place afterwards. You know him getting revenge and everything. All of that made sense to me. Nothing was a. Uh, you know, too too crazy. Nothing was uh, poorly written, so I loved it. Yeah, Deadpool's an interesting one. And the thing is, I, I, I don't know if everyone has this, but there's certain actors I just don't like. <laughs> <laughs> and he, uh, was it Ryan Reynolds? Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds. Yeah. He's one of them. And also, on top of that, I was like, you know, he had Green Arrow. That was a bucket no, of shit. That was Green Lantern. Green yeah. Lantern. Oh, yeah, God. Green Arrow is the, the other guy. Terrible. But yeah, and, and I was Deadpool like, before, then you move too. into another one. But there was some stuff in Deadpool that was funny, I thought. Um, I laughed a lot when he got shot, like, right up the anus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Deadpool is one of those movies I went in, again, uh, with kind of low expectations. And I was pleasantly surprised. It really is f um, a lot of funny moments. Um, I, I, you know, good action. Like you said, it, it kind of makes sense from, from point A to point B. Um, uh, good character. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, Ryan Reynolds also one of those guys, like, uh, I think he's, a, he seems like a very nice guy. Like everything I've ever heard about the guy, he's supposed to be like a really nice guy, but yeah, most of the stuff he's been in doesn't really do it for me. Um, but yeah, I think uh, for Deadpool, he's, he's perfect. And I think he really works in, in that role. I really like it. All right. Number three for me, going back to Aronofsky is a uh, black swan. Oh, okay. I did see that as well. Yeah, just um, he really focuses on on the um, obsessive personalities. People who are just completely obsessed with their work, or you know, whatever, something like that. And there's a lot of tension, and there's just a lot of kind of weirdness, and there is a little bit of surrealness and madness. Uh, just a lot of fun. I really liked it. Yeah, it's it's been a while since I saw that movie. I remember thinking like. It's good. I, like, it, it's not a movie that I, I don't think I'd ever revisit. I, I remember, though, like, is, is there a scene in that movie? I um, I remember, like, just thinking, like, this was, like, kind of horrifying where, like, Natalie Portman, she, like, she's kind of, like, waking up and she, like, I think she, like, starts jerking off or something. And then she notices, like, her mom is, like, asleep in the same room. And she, <laughs> yeah, 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 really yeah. I was like, that's kind of horrifying. Yeah, and their relationship, too, is just one of those ones where you're just, like, you're cringing the whole time. Just <laughs> unhealthy, weird. Yeah. Yeah, I've not seen that movie, but I've I've definitely heard about it and heard good things. So I need to check it out, but I'm late to the game. <laughs> All right, so my number three, I'm also going to head to the Marvel um, superhero pool with, I think, if if not my favorite Marvel movie, um, definitely my second favorite. Like, it def it's, it's right up there. Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, love this movie. Um, came out in 2014, I believe. And what I loved about this is... Um, I had not really 
read, um, uh, you know, much Guardians of the Galaxy in the comics before this came out. And, and the stuff before this movie came out, uh, I would say the characters um, are uh, not like, like the characterizations in the movie are better in the comics. And subsequently, the comics have become a lot more like the movie um, counterparts because of that. Um, but this was a movie, yeah, um, uh, you know, uh, I, I liked it. I didn't know much about it going in. And uh, once again, a movie uh, with great balance. Except, all the all the characters yeah. get their due. Um, you you care about all of them. They kind of all go through their arcs. Um, you know, and and you know Chris Pratt. You know all the. Um, yeah, perfect cast. Yeah, Dave Bautista yeah. is Drax. Great, uh, just yeah, perfect, perfect casting. Um, uh, you well balanced. Uh, you know between humor and giving you just enough emotion that you care about the characters. Fantastic soundtrack. Oh yeah, you I know love these, the music. In that yeah, movie. you got these like you know pop hits from like and and classic rock hits from like the seventies. Um, man, I just had I have a ball with this movie. Um, what do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, I love Guardians of the Galaxy. I never heard of it before, but when I saw it, I was like, this is one of my favorite movies. I've seen it multiple times. Uh, visually, it is stunning. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, like you said, the music is amazing, and that's enough to get me excited to watch that movie. So I loved it. And uh, yeah, I thought the characters, the arcs, and everything that you talked about, yeah, very well well made. You know, I, I definitely cared about each character going into the, the end of the movie. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's actually gonna. That's my number two on my list, so that'll be my next one. But um, pretty much a flawless movie. Just everything works. Everything it really is just yeah. very well written. And I think they got a little more leniency in their writing because they chose um, something that wasn't quite as mainstream, and they just destroyed it. Yeah, and you know it's funny because like when I said this is maybe my um, number one uh, Marvel movie, and it might be the the other one that fights for that spot is the original Iron Man, which I also really love. And Iron Man's another character where Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man is better than any Iron Man comic. Uh, I uh, you know uh, Iron Man you know in the comics before he came along to me. Kind of a bland character, and and his take on it is infinitely more interesting um, than the comics. So yeah, um, I love that movie, and I love Guardians, just fantastic. And like you said, that like as far as criticism, it's it's really hard to pick apart. It's, it's really hard to pick anything. I think the only thing was, uh, you know, the bad guy was a little maybe a little milk toast. Yeah, and and I think Marvel maybe has that problem. <laughs> in in a lot of their movies but well a lot of times it's the other way around it's like you know the good guy's too good and the bad guy actually ends up driving the story and i think like the tv show the flat no not which one was it the uh daredevil oh, yeah. oh with like the, the first season was so great kingpin drove that entire story yeah he was great um, and then sometimes the bad guys take away with a story like that, but Marvel's got very strong characters going. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. We're getting down to, so number two. Yeah. Who's this on me? Uh, yeah. All right. At number two, I have John Wick. Uh, I just love the action in this movie. The whole, uh, beginning of it. I love animals. So, you know, the way it starts out. Uh, that frustrated me. I was very upset <laughs> you know, with the scene that took place in that movie. And uh, just his reaction, it seemed, you know, good story. I loved it. I followed it. And uh, the action was just incredible in that movie. And Keanu Reeves, I thought, did an amazing job. You know, he didn't have to say much. He was just quiet. But, I mean, uh, him learning those moves and everything and playing like a stoic character, I loved it. Yeah, um, you know, Keanu Reeves is one of those guys that kind of gets... Um some flack for his acting because they say like he's very wooden and I would kind of agree with that but despite that he's been in some of my favorite movies of yeah. all time like I love The Matrix um, I love Speed uh, I, <laughs> I, I, I love the we, we could have an hour show about you and Speed uh, <laughs> fucking love Speed um, and I'll be honest I actually considered putting a John Wick movie on this list and I, I think the John Wick uh, one you know, it definitely has the best story, like what's driving him. 
Um, but for me, like the driving force of those movies is like the fight choreography and like how fun that is. And so I think in those terms, I actually like the John Wick two just a little bit more. And I, I also like the world building in in those movies, how they have like this whole setup with the assassins and like hotel. how they pay for everything. Yeah, yeah the hotel, um, just some really cool world building elements. Yeah, I I, I enjoy um, all those movies. I don't. Um, I know I watched the first one. And the only thing I really remember is that I didn't like that much. Really, <laughs> really. Um, but you, you, you seem like you got a choreography thing, and I don't like the the choreography too often. Like it's. Well, I mean, I think that's what sets. Um, I, I, I mean, I understand you have to have it, but it just always feels inorganic to me. I guess. I mean, I think that's what sets the John Wick movies and the Raid movies apart. Is is because I mean, sometimes some movies the fight choreography isn't that that impressive, but I just think it's in these movies it's so tightly done and and it's it's really just comes off visually very cool and and it's very enjoyable. All right, so <laughs> I can't even like justify my answer because I don't remember that much. I think probably the dog thing was the best part. I don't know. Well, I mean, that's, yeah, that was, um, yeah, basically the dog was a present from his dead wife. And so when the dog dies, yeah. you know, that's kind of, you know, why it, it gets under his skin so much. And, and yeah, all those fuckers had to die because they killed that dog, you that's know, right. they had to, they had to do it. Um, so you said your number two was Guardians. My number two is Guardians. So that's uh, done. All right. Um, so my second movie, um, was also a movie I was surprised by how much I loved it. So, so the movie is Blade Runner 2049. And, um, you know, the original Blade Runner is a movie that I think I saw a part of a really long time ago and, and kind of fell asleep. But before this movie came out, I was like, you know, what? I want to finally sit down and watch the original Blade Runner. And, um, for those of you that don't know, there's like five cuts of that movie. Um, and the one people say is the best is what the, the final cut. So that's the one I watched. And, and I'll be honest, I don't really care that much for the original Blade Runner. I think aesthetically it's, it's cool. Like this cyberpunk kind of right. world I think it the sets up. The visuals were ahead of their time. And sometimes you'll forgive a movie if the, if it's that much ahead of his time. Yeah. But uh, the story maybe wasn't all there. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the story has a of the original has like a nugget of a good idea, but it's never explored in a satisfying way. The movie a lot of times is plotting to the point of being straight up boring. Um, the action that actually takes place in the movie isn't very good, and and the thing that should be like kind of the heart of the movie which is the relationship between Harrison Ford and um uh the replicant uh, which I'm I'm blanking on her the actress's name but like it's even not that good like he comes off as kind of a uh, a creepy like kind of a guy and I it's yeah just the whole movie like I, I think it's overrated, and I think a lot of it comes from, like you were saying, how ahead of its time it was in terms of its aesthetic. But um, I saw the trailer for Blade Runner 2049, and I really, really um, liked it. And so I went and saw it, and I was actually blown away by uh, Blade Runner 2049 because um, I think the not only does it look great, but the kind of driving force of the movie, and I don't really... I don't want to give away anything for people who haven't seen it, but kind of the, the the thing that drives the movie is really, really interesting and really satisfying. And to set it up, because I think a lot of people know this, people who haven't even seen the original Blade Runner, but there's a thing put into the original Blade Runner of like, is Harrison Ford an actual human or is he a replicant himself? Yeah. They kind of put this mystery in, which from what I want to understand, like the original writers of Blade Runner, they didn't have that in the script. It's something Ridley Scott um, added and they didn't actually really like that he did that. Like to them, he was just a human. It seems like it was part of the Philip... Okay, Dick. I mean, that's the uh, where the title is comes from. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Because isn't it kind of based on uh, "Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep"? Right. But um, but yeah, I don't know. So maybe the screenwriters wanted to change it from that or something. I don't yeah, know. it could be. Um, but yeah, they set up um, that whole thing. What I like about Blade Runner twenty forty nine is they they 
set up a way to kind of continue that mystery as to whether he's human or um, a replicant. But uh, there's that still that ambiguity. But whether he is or whether he isn't, um, they, it's still very interesting what the ramifications are. Uh, to the world would be whether he is or isn't, which I really love how they were um, able to do that. And um, uh, yeah, the movie just, it's, it's, I, I, I like a block, uh, a movie with blockbuster type production values that doesn't have you turn off your brain. Like it's a, it's a movie that, that, uh, you know, makes you think and it's, it has spectacular visuals. Um, so yeah, yeah. Anyone out there who has not seen Blade Runner 2049, even if you have not seen the original Blade Runner, I would highly, highly recommend it. Great film. Well, uh, wow, we're down to it. Yeah, everyone's right. number on, one number movie. One. Mine's already been covered. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I put that at number one. Oh wow! So we all. Yeah. I had a Love suspicion it. that was had to be up there. Yeah. yeah. Great movie. That's all I got to say. God, <laughs> God it really is. Like, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It works really well. All really high on our lists. Uh, so my number one, Django Unchanged. I gotta go with Tarantino. I kind of uh, thought it would be on your list. Exceptional uh, hero story. Um, you don't see too many period pieces there that aren't exceptionally like serious. And instead of being a victim, you know, he's the hero and there's just a lot, a lot going on. And Tarantino is always great with dialogue and everything. So just an amazing movie. Christoph Waltz was a, was really good in that movie too, right? That's his name. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. been, he's been coming out a lot more since that movie, like kind of, Moved him a little more mainstream, I think, even though he'd done, I think, a fair amount of stuff. Well, I mean, um, he was in Inglorious Bastards before yeah. that, right? Yeah, I, that one was actually probably oh. the one that was more, but yeah. Tarantino uses him a lot. So, I mean, I'll say I'm not the biggest like Tarantino fanatic. Like, I think all of his movies, at the very least, um, pretty much are good. Kill Bill is the only one I absolutely love. All the other ones I'm like are kind of, for me, varying degrees of... <laughs> Okay. The thing with me and Tarantino is like his scenes are always really great. His dialogue is always yeah. really great. Dialogue, he's and he the king. can put a, yeah. more tension in a scene than anyone. And occasionally, like the story as a whole doesn't seem to work, which I've had that you know a couple times on his stuff. But yeah, Django and Kill Bill are masterpieces, definitely. See, that's weird that you say that because for for me, like Kill Bill's at the top, and and for me t in Tarantino's list, Django would be towards the bottom. It's one that works one uh, less for me. I don't know. To me, it never really got past the whole like you know slavery like revenge porn type thing. I, uh, I mean, revenge is a huge part of a lot of his things, but part of his revenge. But I think more the. The bigger plot is a, a hero's journey on that one, but yeah, definitely revenge elements in there. Maybe I should revisit it one day because I did only watch it the f one time, but I don't know. It just it it didn't it didn't catch he, me, you know. Because at the end of the day, does he? I don't think he even kills anybody that was in his past. You know, it's a fight of the system and people in that system. Hey, him trying to save his wife. Am I re misremembering this, or is there a scene at the end of the movie where he like moonwalks on a horse? Well, he does like the little fancy horse dance thing. Is that okay? Yeah, I don't know what that's called. Is that still <laughs> horse dancing? <laughs> there, uh, it is a, definitely a thing. Is it like yeah. dressage or something? Yeah, that's right. Oh, you know. I see. <laughs> I think I've heard. Oh. I just learned something about this dude. <laughs> Mitt Romney was into that. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, so th those do you think those would be your favorite Tarantino movies? Would be Django and Kill Bill. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Anything else before I go? Uh, where are we going to do honorable mention? Well, I'm going to do my number one. Oh yeah, you got number one left. So this one, this one wasn't even tough for me, <laughs> and like I, I was surprised it didn't. Ball hogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and and this movie actually came out. Uh, just had its ten year anniversary not long ago. Came out in 2010, um, which is of course Christopher Nolan's Inception. Yeah, I knew you were gonna have that one. Um, God, I uh, to me, I I think this movie is a, a straight up masterpiece. It's so well written, so well put together. Uh, it's a very um, you know layered film. No pun intended. If you've actually seen it, um, uh, but the the thing I love about it is it's one of those movies where I would say for like the first, you know, every time I watched it, 
I would pick up on these little details I didn't see the first time. And every time you watch it, you're like, oh, God, I didn't notice that. I didn't notice that. All these uh, cool little uh, intricate details. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm a big Nolan fan in general. He's probably my favorite director. Um, and I can't wait to see Tenet if it ever comes out in the U.S. <laughs> but um, the way he plays with time in the movie – um, and, and just kind of the, um, emotional impact he gets out of the movie. Um, once again, a great uh, ensemble task, uh, cast. And, uh, once again, like Blade Runner 2049, the thing I think I love about Nolan movies is like, you know, uh, as much as I love movies, they usually come in two flavors, which is like the kind of well acted and directed, but, um, uh, not visually interesting, like uh, kind of movies that tend to win Oscars and things where you're like, yeah, that was a well put together movie, but I never need to watch it again. Or you get like a really kind of action packed kind of turn off your brain um, movie that's, you know, visually dynamic, but isn't much to the story. But uh, with Nolan, uh, just like with Blade Runner 2049, you get this blockbuster with a brain where it's, it's got great visuals but also doesn't ask you to, to shut your brain off. You, you know, it makes you think. Um, and uh, once again, like um, a great use of ambiguity, probably one of the best ambiguous endings uh, in film. And the, the thing I think that works about the ambiguity in, in it and, uh, you know, with Blade Runner 2049 and whether Harrison Ford is, is or is not a replicant is, is you know what the different uh, choices are, and they're both satisfying. Um, now, have you ever seen Inception? Oh yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's definitely on my. It was. It was. I was about to put it on my list. Um, yeah, I can't say uh, enough good things about it. I to me, it is a masterpiece. I absolutely love it, and I think you can watch it ten times and and still pick up new things. Now, you, I'm surprised, don't like it because more well, than you do. I, I don't necessarily not like it. Again, it's like it's one of these things with you have a million pieces and they have to fit together so tightly. And it's definitely a huge task and it's an impressive task in that. And it's visually interesting. But the story as a whole, I don't know if it didn't suck me in, I guess. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Um, so, yeah, um, let's go ahead and go through some of our honorable mentions. And what are some movies that almost made you guys' cut but didn't? All right. Well, uh, for me, one of my honorable mentions was Inception. Okay. And uh, I have a second honorable mention, which was uh, 21 Jump Street. I thought that was a funny movie. <laughs> yeah, was, I kind of forgot about that, but yeah, that was, yeah. That was funny. and actually, even the sequel, Twenty Two Jump Street, they were yeah. both like fun, you know, funny movies, better than you know than I would have thought. Twenty One Jump Street was funny because you would think that uh, Channing Tatum's character would be like the cool, popular guy, <laughs> and it turns out that it's his uh, partner. <laughs> right, they flipped it, Jonah. Hill. Jonah Hill, yeah, yeah, <laughs> who's the uh, popular character, and just everything from that point forward was just hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, those movies uh, are fun. Well, I, I really liked a lot of the cartoons and like the Disney Pixar stuff, and I wanted to sneak a cartoon in, and it didn't quite make it. But I was for the time period, I was considering maybe Moana, or you have a different studio. You had Kubo and the Two Strings, which I really enjoy, kind of the fairy tales, and that that fell into that. So I was just considering a couple of those. Yeah, um, there was no animated movies um, that really got close to making the cut, but, um, I do really like inside out as far as Pixar movies. Um, I think that's a really great movie with a lot of good, uh, kind of emotional stuff in it. Um, let's see. Um, Oh, one, so one of my honorable mentions would be the nice guys, um, Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe, uh, play a pair of, uh, detectives in like, I think like the 1970s. That's and, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, it's just it's um it, it it's one of those I just um uh, really love it. it's one of again really greatly written tightly written movies where like kind of everything uh comes back uh, and and you can kind of pick up on these small details and things and just uh really funny really fun uh and kind of a noirish movie the same director um also did a movie called kiss kiss bang bang with robert downey jr and um 
Val Kilmer. It, it's kind of along the same lines, you know. They they play um, uh, kind of detective type characters, uh, and and there's this noirish type mystery going on. And I highly recommend both those movies. Uh, very fun movies if you guys have never seen those. That's another one I know I watched, and and like there's nothing in my brain. Man, go go back and revisit. I remember that the car crash. Yeah, yeah. Go back, <laughs> go back and revisit it. It's it's fun. Yeah, I've not seen that movie. Oh man, it, you should. Um, okay, any any other uh, on your uh, list? I'm all clear. Oh. I've got a couple little ones. Go ahead and go through. Like yours. another uh, another kid one, like the last Harry Potter barely snuck into 2010. Oh right. And just as a series, it was really great, and the kids. Well, Jai, my my youngest likes it. My my older one, he's still kind of scared about it. I think. But so that was a consideration. And then uh, sci-fi, I was kind of looking for a sci-fi, and I really liked Splice. And it's been a while since I saw that one. But Yeah, I didn't see that one. Definitely an uh, interesting, you know, scientific morality story. So I had a lot of fun with that one. I think that's about all I got. Shut and up. It Falls was on my, also on my uh, possibles. I have just a couple more. Um, this one I actually thought was a 2009 movie, but I looked it up earlier and it was 2010, which was the first uh, Kick-Ass movie. Oh yeah, that's a. I thought well, a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, also, uh, a, f- a first Avengers movie, um, very close to making my my list. Um, also, uh, Infinity War. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, it's hard to pick. You, well, you know, Infinity War and Endgame is basically like one big story. But I, I think if I had to choose between those two, I would choose Infinity War just because you know the ending catches you off guard whereas as soon as you see that ending you're like well i know how uh end game is gonna end all the all of them are gonna come back yeah. and so but but they do it in a, in a great way and everything um and then I, like i was talking about earlier i kind of flirted with uh putting a john wick movie on the list but ultimately i i didn't um but yeah th- those are mine so um yeah great uh Great stuff. Yeah, good session. Had a lot of fun. Do you think we should uh, recap our lists for everybody? Or nah, okay. I, I think it's been it's drawn out, so I think it's just be a uh, beating the dead horse. Okay, well, uh, guys, since we've uh, uh, talked last, uh, I think everyone's on Twitter now. So AJ, where can the people find you? I am a name for this too, and that's the number two. The number two. This is a number two name. <laughs> Somebody to else took that. a name for this. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have to be like 455. I got lucky. <laughs> and Lester, where can the people finally find you? I'm at unsolicited SUG. Now, neither one of you guys thought, hey, maybe I'll actually put my name in my handle. <laughs> Nah. <laughs> I don't trust people. <laughs> um, you work, can, of course, work, work doesn't need to find this. <laughs> this would be like where you get fired ten years down the line, and you're like, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> And you guys can, of course, find me at Zach Jones Live, Z-A-C-H is how you spell my name, the, the right way. Not like those lamos that spell it with either a K or just a C. Yeah, I think just the C is the uh, the efficient way. Like Zach Efron. No fucking silent H's. <laughs> You're going to want that H. <laughs> yeah, that, that's silent what she H's. said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, man, this this was a, a fun episode. I hope we do some of these uh, list episodes in the future. Uh, everybody out there, uh, we would love to um, see your lists of your favorite movies from the tens, um, your top ten of the tens. Or maybe you're just your top one because my attention span is not so good. No, no. Give us Give us the whole ten. Um, and also maybe give us uh, suggestions for uh, you know top ten lists you'd like to see in the future that we can do. Um, we definitely at one time will have to do our top ten of all time. I think that would definitely be a fun one. It would have been easier. Now let me ask you this: um, How many of the movies uh, on your list today do you think would be in your top ten of all time? It's a good question. Uh, I'd say maybe two or three. Uh, uh, there's a lot of good stuff back there. Because I think actually only Inception. But, you know, over time, that could change. Um, but, yeah, interesting. All right, guys. Well, um, I think that's all for today. So we'll catch you next week. Bye. Bye. Take care. <laughs>